Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 20th of June, 2024. Let's talk topics for today. So we've got an open question about monthly meeting cadence. Then we've got things related to Jenkins builds, Jenkins weekly releases, Jenkins LTS releases, contributor spotlight, and Google Summer of Code, and Jenkins.io, and version docs project, and the switch from Jetty 12 to Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 using EE8. And let's talk through that. Any other topics that need to be added? Nothing from my side. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So first topic, Kevin Martins is going to be unavailable for six to eight weeks. Uh, with that unavailability, I proposed in the docs chat channel that we switch this to a monthly meeting until he's able to return. Uh, for me, it's, we'll keep doing documentation work, but I think we can re meet monthly just like the UX six SIG does. Bruno, is that all right with you? That's fine with me. Thank you, Mark. All right. By Bruno and Mark. Uh, Mark, update the calendar. I will do that. Jenkins calendar. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So next topic is 2.463 weekly has been built and released. And it includes this really cool thing that it requires Java 17. Special thanks to Basil Crow for all the amazing work he's done on it and for the blog post that announced it. The JVM progress chart is a great way to show that yes, in fact, Jen Java 17 usage in the worldwide Jenkins user base is increasing significantly. And we're grateful for that. Weekly now requires Java 17. LTS will require Java 17 beginning the 30th of October, 2024. Any That's questions spooky. or comments there? No, just a stupid comment. 31st. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a spooky news. <laughs> well, it's it's the 30th, not the 31st. So that's good. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. Next topic then is LTS releases. Here we're scheduled to release the next LTS July 10th. Special thanks to Chris Stern. He's a uh, Chris has uh, offered to again carry the the responsibility as release lead. Uh, I will Mark will create the changelog and upgrade guide while Kevin is away. Creating the changelog and the upgrade guide is a rather involved process and training somebody else to do it is, is rather painful. If they're not going to do it repeatedly, they'll lose the skill pretty quickly. So the other step is that we need to choose a new LTS baseline. Oh, oh, I missed that. Done? No, no, I think I totally... Um... Uh, fabricated that uh, I oh, thought. Okay. <laughs> um, I thought yes, as we could see that nobody was uh, complaining about that um, weekly release and that it was the last one that worked with JDK eleven. I thought I had read somewhere that this would be the baseline, but I'm totally mm -hmm. wrong. I think. Yeah. Well, no, it it does make sense. It should be that one. I think that's an excellent choice. And if we look at the the health of the thing. 35 sunshine only the one here and this one is not is is something that was introduced in 2.459 and we must have this is the transition from apache file upload one to apache oh, file upload yeah. two that's required for spring security six update so we're not going to back this one out the mini orange plugin will have to adapt to it and the adaptation does not look like it's terribly difficult. Basel even submitted a pull request, but they'll have to oh. merge it and release it. Already, okay, that's pretty cool. If we already have the solution, wow. Right, I mean, it's it's very encouraging when, hey, we've, we've got a proposal. We certainly, we don't own the mini orange plugin. They'll need to decide when they release, but They've got the change ready for them to use. Okay, so I um, made this news out of thin air, but it makes sense nonetheless. We'll see. Right, and and we won't know until next Wednesday what that final decision is. But it makes sense that four dot four two dot four hundred sixty two is a sensible choice. Thank you, Mark. 
All right. Next is the contributor spotlight. Thanks to Kevin, before he before he was became unavailable, he merged this poll request to highlight Harsh Pratap Singh uh, as a Jenkins contributor. Harsh is a former Google Summer of Code contributor in previous projects and is now acting as a Google Summer of Code mentor. So thanks very, very much for Harsh's work and good, good progress. Uh, Mark, if I may interrupt you, uh, I think that uh, Chris Martin created uh, the PR, but that uh, Kevin Martin, so sorry, uh, created the PR, but Chris merged it on time. So that's, ah. uh, yeah, coll collaborative work. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. So, so created by Kevin Martin. Great. Now we've got an ongoing challenge. We need to add several additional contributors and here's one suggestion darren pope suggests adding john mark mason uh he's very shy <laughs> we'll see when it comes to talking about himself that I mean, so yeah right so we may have to we may have to ne ne negotiate that but that's i think it's not unreasonable for us to offer yeah so so we have vision. we have candidates now the challenge we have is right now we don't have someone to do the writing for it. Uh, Kevin's yeah. unavailable, so so looking for volunteers that can help with writing that can write the next several spotlights. Yeah, yes. so that's that's one where. We're about two weeks from publishing the next, and in that two weeks, we need help. Um, yes, indeed, but you never know. Uh, contributors could themselves write a draft or their own Good. story. The interview can be done by the contributor himself. You know, I interviewed myself, for example, for my exactly. contributor spotlight. So that could uh, be not such a burden on the people that will create the PR later on. Great. All right, next topic was contributor data collection for a thanking random contributors based on Jenkins, based on their contributions to Jenkins. So this is something like we see with the Eclipse Temerin site, where at the bottom of their pages, we see a thank you page, a thank you notice, right? It's something yep. like this, thank you so-and-so for making two con contributions. You want to say more about it, Bruno? Uh, no, the PR is not yet merged. Uh, as far as I know, the discussion is still raging. <laughs> uh, Chris, could you please add that and this and whatever? But uh, it's almost finished now. The um, data is now uh, found in an official Jenkins uh, repo. So that should be finished pretty soon, I hope. Great. Thank you. All right. Next topic is Google Summer of Code projects. And this one has a very, very nice story to tell. Okay, so here's the project. Now let's look at how the prototype looks. New.stats.jenkins.io, this is the prototype. Okay, let's, let's first, we've got to remind ourselves how awful the old site looks <laughs> because, yeah. okay, here it is. This is the old site, already not pretty at the top level. Now it gets worse. This is the old site. Well, there's there's data, and it's been years that this site has been this way. Here's the proposed new site, uh, currently visible at new.stats.jenkins.io. So if I click stats, this shows me plugin install trends. The one I watch, Jenkins install trends. Uh, JVMs, here's the the... An, a graph similar to the graph that was included in the Java 17 announcement blog post with hovering data. So we can see that some 20% of Jenkins installations are still using Java 8, uh, even though we stopped supporting Java 8 several years ago. So we know that we, that, that means they're running a Jenkins version that's several years out of date. So interesting data. And, and Shlomo is doing amazing work at making this 
this just just a sweet navigation experience. The data comes in very well. I was just looking at the 2024 data and top plugins over 2,500 and was interested to see this thing that there's a, an odd edge here where 2,000 switches down to 150,000 after the instance identity plugin. And I'm going to have to think about that more to think why that might be. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. there, it's fun to see trends in this kind of thing and speculate why that trend might be there. Thanks, Shlomo. This is excellent work. Really amazing. Anything you wanted to note there, Bruno? Uh, no. So this is a live version of the current state of the main branch. But I have seen some PRs uh, which are pretty promising. Uh, in particular, when it comes to plugins, you'll have tons of uh, insights on the data. And that will be really helpful to help understand what's going on. Good, very good. Okay, so and thanks to Netlify for hosting our preview sites, and thanks to Hervé Lemur and and the infrastructure team for making the preview sites oh, available. Yes. So this came from a pull request, right? And and that pull request generates this site that then is a disposable site that can be used yep. just to see how it looks in preview of that pull request. Cool, excellent. Anything else? No, thank you, Mark. Okay. So, oh, looking forward to July 11 for the midterm presentation. So that I'm sure will be a, a Jenkins online meetup, a Zoom yes. webinar. And mm -hmm. uh, thanks very much to them. Jenkins.io updates. So Bruno, thanks for capturing some of the things that have been going on in Jenkins.io. Um, dependency updates are fixed now. So, yep. okay. So this is the one where, where I... I detected something. Is that what happened? Yes. Thank oh, you, good. Mark. You detected okay. that you had to do the work all by yourself, by hand, like you used to do a few months ago. And so that was kind of puzzling for me. Uh, so in 7.3.6.4. And so I found the reason why this wasn't working anymore. Nothing major. It's just that we simplified and revamped the existing tutorials. And doing so, I forgot to change the update CLI manifest uh, to mm. take that into account because some of the text we were watching had just disappeared. So once I corrected the manifest, we then got two or three automatic PRs. So it's back on track. It's working again. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, so our pull requests don't have any open changes for update no. CLI. This is great. All right. Others, we've uh, got these one are three of yours. If I'm oh, not okay, so we don't we don't need to worry about those then. That's good. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Very good. You, Mark. And special thanks to Chris Chris Stern and to Vandit Singh for their work on docs.jenkins.io. This can Chris has has the plan to synchronize the content from www.jenkins.io to docs.jenkins.io about once a month. Uh, we've still got a number of reviews we need to do here. The, there's a pending change to switch to a more current release as the, as the marked baseline here. But the navigation is there. It's ready for people to read, to review, to give comments. Looking forward to it. Any comments you want to make there? Bruno? No, I'm still happy to see that progressing and the look is much more modern, I may say, and it's a pleasure to navigate in this new website. Great. Excellent. Okay, next topic then is the Jenkins switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 EE8. So this is part of the Spring Security Upgrade Project. We've already completed step one, use Apache file upload two, and step two, require Java 17, this is the next step. Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 has a number, of, a number of changes that have to be made in Jenkins and in plugins. It's actually described in a Jenkins issue. I can link to that issue from the, from the, the document here in just a moment. Let's see if I've mm -hmm. got it. Here we go. 
EE8 to EE9 Jakarta. No, that's the predator. That's the next one. This one. We want this one. 73 Jenkins-73120. And here we're looking for extra help. There's a lot of work to do. And the lot of work to do could actually be helped by lots of people assisting. Basel has outlined all the work in this set of tasks underneath. So adapt this plugin, adapt this plugin, et cetera. And this is work that just needs to be done. So, okay. so it's, we'd love to have extra help. There's no reason it can't be done. We can get the pull request ready and, and be ready when sometime in July, the, this thing is merged to Jenkins core to Windstone, to Stapler, all the various places it needs to go, and then we'll ship a version of Weekly with it. Any questions there, Bruno? No, just a comment. Uh, I would say that we don't need to be afraid of making that kind of changes because not all the changes that are mandatory are part of Jenkins core. Some of the changes are needed in various Jenkins plugins. So you could try your luck with uh, upgrading these plugins in order to help with these uh, global efforts. Right, exactly. I, that's very good. Help by updating a plugin uh, with a pull request. So you don't even have to be a maintainer of that plugin in order to submit a valid pull request. It'll give you a chance to learn what it means to switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 and help the Jenkins project. Um, I still have one question though. Uh, in this um, Epic, is that the right name? Uh, we see the list of things that have to be done, but when they are done, do they just disappear? Or uh, Because I would like to um, tell people here, is a plugin that we modified. You could maybe take an example from this and try to apply that to another plugin that needs the same kind of treatment. Is that even possible? Yes, of course. It's close, but it's just there. So yeah, we can so, get inspired. So by that. for example, here is here this green check mark next to it on, on Jira shows this one is done and it shows okay. as closed. And so if someone wants a hey, how did it happen? Go to this one. Here's the link to the pull request to the configuration as code plugin that made the change. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. That's uh, what now, I was looking for. Each plugin may need a different set of changes, of but Basel has described what oh. those changes are in general in the, in the bug reports. So, so he says, hey, here's a failing test and we need to change this import. That's a pretty easy PR to submit, changing an import. Now, it won't be that import, that change cannot be merged until Jenkins Test Harness has Jetty 12 support. So, oh. but that means the pull request could start with it and yeah. reference an unreleased version of the Jenkins Test Harness, show that it resolves it. And then when the mm. Jen Jenkins Test, Test Harness releases, the pull request gets updated by the uh, submitter. The update then runs through and a new plugin release can be done with that new version of Jenkins test harness as a dependency. That's tempting. Thank you, Mark. All right. Let's see. And where were we? Oh, this was right here. Good. Okay. The next stop along our journey there is, is the transition from Jakarta from Jetty 12 EE8 to Jetty 12 EE9, and that's a much larger transition. This one, this one, no date's been determined. It it will be, it is in Jenkins 73255. But again, there are many, whoops, 73. There are many, many tasks in that that could be done by anyone. This is not, oh, we have to have one person with very special results, mm -hmm. special skills. Any one of us could take this on. So here's one I was looking at just yesterday. Adapt the Git plugin for Jetty, Jetty 12. And, and the suggestion here is actually a really good one. It's improve this particular test to not have a flawed depend, the flawed dependency it does on mocking of, of Jetty. It should use a different technique, and it really should. So, so those kind of things are very promising. Again, we need we're looking for and would be delighted to have help. 
Any questions there, Bruno? Uh, no, thank you, Mark. I will see what I can do. And I hope other people will chime in and help with that. Thank you. Great. And as far as I know, the Quick Start, Quick Start Tutorials project is still working on the it's Spring Security working. branch? Yes, I updated it this morning with Basil's latest war file. So if I look at the Spring Security branch here, I'll see that in the in the versions here, let's see, and where is that? Is that in the Docker file? Individual, oh, I, I could look at the commit, couldn't I? Because certainly the commits will show the history of what you did. There it is. Yes. So it's using this 2.464, this weekly build. And if someone wants to run it, all they do is follow the directions in the tutorial, but from the mm -hmm. Spring Security branch instead of using the uh, master branch right. or the main branch, not master. It's called main. Yeah. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Bruno, thanks very much. Anything else we You're should welcome. discuss today? Uh, nothing am I, I am aware of. So nothing from my side. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thanks very much. So see you four weeks, one four more weeks from, from now. now. I'll adjust yeah. the calendar and it will show that we're switching to a monthly cadence. I'll still meet weekly with Docs Office Hours Asia. And we may discuss a different pace there because I'll be unavailable next week. So we may switch to every two weeks there. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay.